Hi, I'm Nick Scarpa. I'm Sid Perkins. I'm Jung Dong Jun. And we're the design team for the Silver Gallery at Pupin Plaza. Our design for a solar PV system intends to fulfill three purposes. To serve as a practical and freestanding source of energy for use by Columbia's students, staff, and faculty. To function as an educational tool by which we can all improve our understanding of new solar technology. And to stand as a symbol for the values of the university and all of those who believe in a better future for our planet. Through these three goals, we hope to inspire individuals who may go on to work on research in related areas of science and engineering or may go on to become consumers themselves of solar systems for personal use. The design of our structure itself is based on the look and feel of Butler Library. As you can see, the names of the great liberal arts minds of our time have been replaced with the names of the greatest scientists, engineers, and mathematicians, such as Darwin, Galileo, Tesla, Copernicus, Gauss, Pasteur, Young, Leibniz, Euler, Lavoisier, Franklin, Turing, Bohr, Planck, and Da Vinci, Newton, Feynman, Faraday, Einstein, and Curie. Along with its symbolic significance, we wanted the solar gallery to be accessible and comfortable so that people would actually want to make use of it. Accordingly, we supplemented our design with several amenities to live up to, it, to such ideals. Our amenities include non-refrigerated vending machine, drinking fountain, LED lights, solar server, and charging outlets. Certainly with vending machine and drinking fountain installed nearby, the users of the solar gallery won't feel the inconvenience of having to actually search for light snacks or water frequently. Particularly during summer, when we expect people to use our solar gallery the most, drinking fountain will be an essential part of, the, of their comfort. To make the gallery available 24-7, we installed 24 LED tube lights that would brighten the gallery up even during the darkest hour of the night. We specifically chose LED lights as they are long-lasting, durable, and energy-efficient. Since they use up only one-third to one-thirtieth of electricity incandescent and CFA lights require, they go particularly well with solar panels. We also plan to install a solar server that monitors and tracks the performance of our solar panels along with other information to serve as an educational educating tool for general improvement in our understanding of the solar technology. Finally, the hallmark of our design, the charging outlets, will be placed on each of the five tables, four outlets per table. We propose that this simple accommodation will make our design much more attractive than any outdoor facilities. In our evaluations, we concluded that the, the biggest challenge in working outdoors is the constraints on the use of electronics. How many times have we been forced to take shelter indoors at the mercy of low battery? With these charging stations, we will no longer be bound by such restrictions. And without this limitation, we expect a, that a large number of people would find our solar gallery accessible and use it as they see fit. Our amenities may be simple, but we do believe that they will successfully, successfully serve their purpose and maximize the solar gallery's accessibility. For our considerations for calculations, we considered two main aspects. 
First, we considered the battery bank size and capacity. Uh, by analyzing weather data published by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, we determined that our, ba uh, our battery bank should produce enough energy, should hold enough energy to supply the system for seven days without sunlight. By considering five people using our system for 12 hours constantly, and for having lights on for 14 hours per day, and a vending machine on non-stop, we considered the daily consumption to be around 3.9 kilowatt hours. Given weather data from NOAA, we determined that the weekly consumption would be 27.4 uh, kilowatt hours. This is sustained for seven days. Uh, using wholesale solar as our provider, we determined that we would need a Rolls Sun uh, Surette battery bank, which would afford us 30.816 kilowatt hours. Now this was the smallest um, solution, this is the so smallest battery bank that was bigger than 27.4 kilowatt hours and that's why we decided to go with this. Um, the voltage it would afford is 24 volts and the charge it can hold is 1.284 amp ampere hours. The total cost of this array is $4.4 thousand um, dollars. Outside of the battery bank we determined the size of our um, the needed size of our solar array. Again, we used weather data from NOAA um, and modeled the system in Python using the aforementioned value for energy consumption and a conservative estimate for energy production based off of solar irradiance on the winter solstice. Our findings conclude that we need an array of at least 16 meters squared. To further uh, serve as a conservative estimate, we elected to use an array of 21 meters squared. Uh, the specifications of the solar array that we found from Wholesale Solar um, is a solar array that produces 4,255 watts and 556 kilowatt hours per month based on five sun hours per day. The price of this array would be around $10,000. Additionally, we considered the energy production um, the average energy production of our array to be around 9.7 kilowatt hours per day. This contrasts with wholesale solar's estimate of 18.5 kilowatt hours per day, but we concluded that this discrepancy is due to our conservative estimate using solar irradiance on the winter solstice. Finally, our runtime was calculated uh, for average loading to be seven full days and in excess loading to be three full days.